Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Informer Law, Informer from uh, Routledge and a part of the Taylor and Francis group. It's part also of the Lloyd's Shipping Library, this particular book, the Shipping Law Library. It's Offshore Construction, Law and Practice, a fascinating area without any doubt, and of course involved in uh, huge amounts of, of money quite often. Um, the book has been written by Stuart Beadle, uh, Beadnell, sorry, I do apologise, Simon Moore. And Elizabeth and I talked about this book. It's available as an e-book as well as a, um, as a hardback, which we'll look at in a minute. But when we were looking at the book and talking about it, we came up with our title for the book review, which will be in the journals and on the web. A unique work of reference on the legal complexities of offshore construction projects and that's what it's about because this is an important area um, of law certainly for this century because we are going to get more offshore construction projects going ahead as we seek to look for further mineral wealth to enhance our own bank accounts apart from anything else and of course the human condition. There is the uh, front of the book there you can see offshore um, now, it's, as I say, it's part of the Lloyd's Shipping Law Library, and there's nothing on the back. The, it's a hardback, and it's, it's very much the style of the um, Informer uh, group. There's the index, 370 pages. Um, you should be able to find what you're looking for pretty easily with the index. It's well, well structured. Then you've got the actual detail itself, right at the end, dispute resolution procedures. Um, if we go to the front, we'll see at the front, there is the front page, and there is the actual list of those publications in the Lloyd's Shipping Law Library, which are listed there. Quite a large number, it's building up quite well at the moment. There's all the detail about the ebook and all the other stuff if you need to look at it. Then we've got the table of contents, um, contents the various chapter headings, which are running through. You can see a nice page there. Then running further, intellectual property rights. Quite a large area covered, in fact. Allocation of risk, of course, acceptance and delivery. Force majeure is nicely covered, which a lot of people will be interested in. And then there's the last parts of the chapters there. Chapter 20 being dispute resolution right at the end. Then there's an acknowledgement um, section to thank people. It was commissioned by, the book was commissioned by Mr Chung, who for many years was Executive Vice President of Daewoo Heavy Industries, the leading builder of offshore oil and gas units. Obviously a very useful uh, commissioning. There's the ta uh, table of cases. And in addition to that, a lot of cases, of course. A little bit on legislation there. And European Union, of course, as well. And then we get into the chapter itself, the various chapters. The first one is the introduction. You see how it's structured. It's got, it's actually got subheadings. Um, there isn't. There's a little bit of, of, uh, of actual footnoting. Not very much. There's no paragraph numbering, uh, except in certain regards. In fact, having said that, uh, when you go through it, there is in fact. Uh, it's not actually as noticeable, but there is. Uh, re paragraph referencing, um, it's actually paragraph numbering underneath the subheads and when you look at the um, the index at the back you will find that it is actually paragraph numbering rather than page numbering. So um, the thing is it, it's not, it doesn't stand out the way it does normally with some of the others where it's a clear the, the clear paragraph number is there. It's actually in the body copy itself so that's something you've got to have, you've got to spot to try and keep an eye on. There we go, chapter five, subcontracting. Well, there's the book. Um, it's a very good new addition to the library. So what do we actually say about the book? There are many kinds of ships and an almost an infinite variety of construction projects. But under what category would you place an offshore construction project? And under what category of law? The answer is rather important if you happen to be a practitioner dealing with such a project and having a, to draft the construction contract. This is where we come in. If so, your first port of call then um, is for clear 
authoritative and erudite advice on this and related matters. And so this would be the book for you. And as I say, Mr Chung had commissioned it. And it's it's well worthwhile book without any question. It would be entirely appropriate to call this a specialist legal textbook, of course, because it's covering offshore construction, which is a specialist area of construction and engineering, which could well be the province of the construction lawyer, but actually it isn't. The two authors, uh, Stuart Beadnell and Simon Moore, explain in the acknowledgements that in the opinion of industry insiders, their industry is unique for a number of reasons. An offshore construction, whatever function it serves, is not a ship nor, in their words, a floating form of offshore building. Hmm. So what is it? It is instead a specialist area of marine construction in its own right, they add, but one that survives without the benefit of standard contracts nor any body of law specifically concerning offshore construction contracts. So you've got a good definition there of what we're talking about. Frankly, it's a bit of a hybrid if I can put it bluntly. But of course it's an important area because, as I've said, this, this century alone will probably see a lot more activity by this type of thing. And think ahead, perhaps another, another century, we might be talking about this sort of thing in space. So you can see the, the logic of having clear sets of rules about what we do. Small wonder, then, that in the opinion of uh, C.W. Chung, who served as Executive Price, Vice President of Daewoo Heavy Industries, which I mentioned, and a leading provider, of course, of offshore oil and gas units, um, and as I said, who he actually commissioned this book, he said a legal textbook focusing entirely on offshore construction contracts is long overdue, hence this title. And it's a pioneering work, we think, in this field, and as such, an important addition to Lloyd Shipping Law Library, published, of course, by Informer Law and Routledge. Having defined what an offshore construction project is, the authors then go on to describe the book as concerned with contracts for designing, building and installing units or platforms or vessels or facilities for the exploration, development, production and decommissioning of offshore oil and gas fields. Referring to the long list of challenges inherent in building an offshore facility, including technological and commercial challenges, as well as fluctuations in market conditions, the need to innovate and the possibility that things may go wrong, the book is also focused inevitably on disputes. Of course, dispute resolution being right at the back. Now, logically organised as the book is, it has 18 chapters. The book covers, um, one would assume, every conceivable aspect concerning the law and practice of offshore construction, from tendering and negotiating contracts to design risk, subcontracting and delay, uh, to a host of other issues, including defects, termination, insurance, transport and installation, and much more. The final chapter, which I've indicated, which I think is a very important one in today's uh, conditions that we find ourselves in, is the Dispute Resolution Procedures chapter. And there's a special chapter, of course, on IP rights and intellectual property rights as well, which I found quite interesting because, again, I hadn't really associated IP rights with this area of law, and it was refreshing to see that they appeared. What particularly distinguishes this book, we feel, is the clarity of explanation and analysis throughout, which we welcome, and thank you to the authors for that. One tends to wonder why more legal texts aren't written with a sim similarly plain-speaking approach. But I think we're moving towards that. I can remember 45 years ago now, when I was studying law, um, that the books then were so turgid and difficult, some of them. I'm talking about the late 60s and the 70s, early 70s. They really were pretty awful, some of them, frankly. And we have modernised and clarified the use of English and tried to simplify things so they are models of, of easy, comprehensive content. Note also, I think, here that the authors have focused primarily on English law, which, as they say, remains the common choice of law for offshore construction contracts, and I'm sure that's probably going to remain the same, irrespective of this decision on Europe. 
Let me conclude by saying it's easy to read, it's easy to use, it's got a detailed table of contents and numbered paragraphs, and we think the book excels as a work of reference with extensive footnoting and tables of cases and legislation. There can't be a, a shipping practitioner or anyone who wouldn't benefit from acquiring a copy. And the publication date is cited at 2017, although I'm recording this prior to 2017 because I got an advanced copy. Here's the book again, and there is the actual spine. As I say, if we go into the beginning of it, it's always quite interesting because it actually does say, first edition published 2017, so I've been lucky, I'm ahead. I've actually got it early. I did say about the number of chapters. I just wanted to make sure we know exactly where we are. There are in fact not 18, but there are 20 chapters in total. As I said, the last one being dispute resolution. If I open it in the middle, this is on defects. Uh, you can see subjective requirements, defects and deficiencies covered there. And again, you've got a little bit of footnoting. I mean, I think it's thankful to say there's very little footnoting in this book, um, because the most of the detail is actually in the body of the of the text itself. That's termination and step-in rights. Altogether, I'm very pleased with this book. The series are a very high quality uh, series. I've said before, and I'll say it, repeat this actually, for us as practitioners, for the judges, for everybody involved, academics, these books are the law. They are actually books that make our lives a great deal easier. Um, I think people probably we take a lot of it for granted, and of course they are public and publishing companies so you've got to make a profit out of all of this but the fact is that this is where the law is this is what makes our lives a lot easier and i'm very grateful to everybody who's been involved in this and a big thank you to all of you bye bye